Hello, and welcome to another episode of Making Sense of Social Media. My name is Lori Clausen. I am your marketing mentor. I have the privilege of interviewing marketing specialists from all over the world to bring you the best information for marketing in the now. Social media and digital marketing has changed so dramatically since its inception almost 20 years ago. Today, I have an amazing guest. His name is Chad. I can't wait for you to meet him. Well, I'm welcome, here. Chad. I'm so excited to have you on the podcast today. Thank you for being here. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to those watching and listening today? Sure. Uh, I'm Chad Ia Peterson. Um, you'll have to look at it and figure out for yourself why it sounds the way it sounds, even though it's spelled the way it's spelled. Uh, <laughs> I am also known as the story catcher. Uh, it's also the name of my company. And uh I work with brands and well, personal brands, speakers, and help them uncover hidden stories uh, that they are then able to craft in a way that connects more deeply with their audience. But I'm sure we'll get into that here as we yeah. talk. So, um, you know, I live in Southeast Texas, been here my whole life, little town on, near the Gulf Coast, almost Louisiana. Oh. And uh, yeah, so that's, uh, you know, I, married, kids, all that stuff, and I don't know what else you want to know. So that's a <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's a really, really good start. And and having known you from social media, well, first of all, known of you and then now know you a little bit through social media. I'm just excited to really chat with you today and, and get into some of the good stuff. I love to think that this podcast is um, reaching small business owners who still really struggle with how to produce content that's effective and that helps them build awareness for their brand and that kind of thing. So that's what we want to sure. really focus on today. So um, my first question for you then is All what, right. in your opinion and expertise, are the main goals of putting out content on your onto social media platforms? I mean, the main goals of putting out content, you know, one that probably doesn't get mentioned as often is putting out content one of the main goals, it should be to help you hone your own message, Ooh. right? Because as you're putting out content, you get better and better at what you do. You find your voice, you learn your voice. And so putting out consistent content benefits you. Um, as far as others and the brand, obviously uh, consistency builds awareness. The right kind of content, you want it to connect with the, the person who's consuming it. You, you want them to want to come and get more um, from you, right? right. I think that's one, that's a place where we, we struggle. Um, and of course, we want the content to convert in some way, yes. right? Whether it's of course. knowing who we are and how to do business with us and what we do or getting believing that we can do it and that we're the right person mm. or, or, or doing, you know, something else, you know, and clicking the links and making purchases and connecting and blah, 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 blah all the stuff. So um, yeah. I think those are the main things we're trying to do. I love that you mentioned that you're right. Nobody that I've interviewed so far has said anything along those lines. And just having that connection between really knowing who you are and, and knowing your own voice and knowing your audience rather intimately so that those two things can connect and, and, you know, combine in the most effective and hopefully profitable way for sure. For sure. No, definitely. that's, I love that. And practice makes, what did I hear one time? You know, the old practice saying makes practice permanent. Oh, perfect practice <laughs> makes perfect. That was the, what I was trying to say and you said it better. So I appreciate that because yeah, <laughs> it wasn't. Old... High school band director used to say that practice oh. makes permanent. Perfect practice makes perfect. I love it. So, so good. I don't know if I agree with it. Um, right. Cause everybody practices and we do practice wrong, but mm -hmm. we learn and we get better. We have coaches th that are there to help us yeah. break habits that we've, so I don't know if, if I agree with it the way it's said, but that is the weird version of it. Yeah. And truthfully, what is perfect in this world? Like absolutely nothing. So, but no, just the perfect is whatever you just put out right. on social media, you know, and, yeah. and it'll get more perfecter. That's a word <laughs> next time. It is now. 
<laughs> Once you begin practicing and have a commitment of putting content out there, how do you begin to measure the impact of that social media? I know you talked about conversions and that kind of thing, but are there some key metrics that you consider or, um, and are there tools maybe that you use to determine that effectiveness? How does a small business owner go about knowing if it's actually working or not? Yeah, I mean, there's tons of tools out there that you can use. I'm an Agora Pulse guy, and it does give me some analytics and allows me to schedule stuff. Um, but the built-in analytics tools uh, that are available on Meta, the Meta Business mm -hmm. Suite, will give you everything you probably need when it comes to those places. And, and right. all of the platforms have their own analytics piece to it. Um, I'm not a big, I'm not an analytics nerd, so I can't like dive down and tell you, here's how to set that up and set this up. Yeah. Um, obviously clicks, conversions, whatever you define the conversion to be. Right. Your, your conversion could be that I wanted people to react to the post. Yeah. Right. So they liked it. They hearted it. Um, they laughy emoji did or whatever. It could be a specific <laughs> one. I, I want mm -hmm. more laughy emojis than the other ones on this post. Because right. I want to make sure that I'm connecting in a, in a humorous way and I'm whatever, right? So it, it, what you decide to measure is what you decide to measure. Comments, well, uh, shares, yeah. and they all have different levels of importance based on, you know, all the different things people say. Um, but for me, my biggest analytic, and it, it's hard to measure in a way, um, but are smiles. Yeah. Smiles, I call them the forgotten analytic. So. I when, love that. <laughs> That's, it's so true, isn't it? Like just mm -hmm. evoking emotion. Yeah. So yeah. You know, when, when you can evoke emotion and, and make people smile, things happen. Right. In fact, it's better than if you're just kind of in their face trying to get them to click whatever it is you want them to click. We did a thing one year at a big conference in San Diego. It was social media marketing world. And I told my wife, I said, hey, what if we go grab a piece of cardboard somewhere on the street? And she's an artist, so she could draw this. I said, let's draw the YouTube logo. And so we did on this piece of cardboard. And then we wrote, please help, need subscribers. <laughs> And we sat in the main lobby for about an hour as people, you know, passed in between sessions or whatever. And some came over. And, and this is where the difference in what it is you're measuring kicks in. People came over. Right. How many new subscribers have you gotten? We said, we don't know. But, we, but yeah. we've seen a lot of smiles. Yeah. And so there were people, there were big name people in the industry that we met that day because they heard about this crazy couple doing this fun thing. And they came out and introduced themselves to us, right? So it's, it's, it, this is a big deal before, like, you see, oh, I really want to meet that well-known marketing person. and going up, yeah. hey, I'm so-and-so. And they just say, oh, hey, I'm so-and-so. And then, right. But when they come and find you. Right. And then that... we actually ended up doing business with people that smiled at us because we had a cardboard sign with a crazy thing on it because you were yourself and put yourself out there in a unique and authentic way. Oh my goodness. I love that. Yet another that was... reminder of, of like how the importance of just being, putting yourself out there and just being yourself. I love it. Yeah. I tell people, you don't have to quit trying to be the best. You don't have to be the best. You just have to be memorable. Yeah. So figure out what makes you memorable <laughs> and then also maybe create your own stories that, create memorable moments, right? So yeah. that's that's one of the things I teach is you you remember old stories, you learn to recognize current stories as they happen, but you also want to try to create stories that you can have involve other people, right? You catch mm -hmm. your story, you catch their story, but when we can catch our joint stories together and they become a part of the story, yeah, the connections you create are... are so much stronger right so um yeah so smiles i'm gonna go with smiles for 500 I love it. please <laughs> so chad what do you say to the person who is 
like willing, wanting, prepared to share their stories, but they're terrified of video. Like they just don't want to get on video. How would you, yeah. what do you do with that? Like, I, I know what I would do with that, but I, I'd love to hear your take on it. You know, I have a, a friend who likes to use the phrase, just press the dang button. And, mm -hmm. and I get that because we procrastinate and we, we imposter syndrome and different things set in. Um, but we also live in a world now that recognizes that there are things called the, uh, you know, mental illnesses, mental health, right? We all have anxieties and, uh, and procrastination, ADHD, depression, like all the fears that we have. Not all of them can be controlled by just saying, just do it and you'll get better. Yep. And so I, some people need to hear that. Um, there's, there's times where I think I'm the person who needs to hear that. And then there's other times that I, I think I'm the one and I've done it who needs a, a coach. Uh, mm -hmm. honestly, um, I think if you're struggling to tell your story, uh, on video or to try struggling to tell your story at all, then, um, a coach, um, yeah. you know, which is what, you know, we, you, you have coaching that you do with the social media and content. And I mm -hmm. actually happen to coach stories. Um, so, uh, I really like the question. Yeah. I have this weird innate ability. Uh, I, I'm a ridiculous empath. And mm. so when I work with people and, and we do video, they don't want to be on video. They relax around me and, and mm -hmm. I engage you in a conversation and so that the, and the, you forget the cameras there. Right. And then when you can see it back and you realize, oh, you know what? That's not so bad. Yeah. Um, you know, getting that first one out of the way gives us uh, that little bit of extra validation. I spent last year um, speaking on free stages around the country. I paid my own travel, oh. hotels, everything. Wow. And I had friends who were like, you can't do that, Chad. It's like, you're just throwing money away. And I, and I said, you spend thousands of dollars on courses and coaches. Mm. I spent it on getting in front of a variety of different types of audiences, honing my message, getting validation and eliminating my imposter syndrome. Oh. And it's because I, I did the first one and then I did the next one and I did the next one. And I went yeah. from telling people, um, I'm well, I'm, I'm working on this thing called the story catcher and you know, I kind of do this and this and this, you know, I, but I, I still do this primarily, you know, to pay the bills or whatever. Um, but I'm trying to trans, you know, all that kind of talk. Uh huh. And, and I went from that to doing that last year. And somebody asked, what do you do? I, I don't think about the past. I just confidently can say to them, right now, well, I'm the story catcher. I help you find and discover stories you didn't know you had and, yeah. Teach you how to craft them in a way that they connect on an emotional level, level so that you will build strong relationships and convert more sales. And I can confidently say that. So, but I had coaches that helped. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, it's, it's a tough one to answer. I would love to know what your, your answer is because I, I don't know if that there's one fits all. There isn't one fits all. And the, that my answer would be that I, I'm actually quite similar. I'm very empathic myself. And when I do get together with a small business owner and we talk about video, um, I, I do, it's a similar experience where I just get them conversing about themselves and thinking about, um, I really dive deep into their voice, their messaging as you do. And I also dive extremely deep into the importance of knowing their audience and how that will affect their content and their outcomes mm -hmm. that they hope for. And then just practicing, practicing, practicing. Yeah. There is this new trend of this faceless marketing, which I don't know. Have you seen that at all? Yeah. It's videos with nobody in it or whatever. Yeah. I just don't, I mean, I see this as a, you know, as a band-aid solution that people are going to fall into the trap of it and expect things to happen. But how can you build relationship when all you're seeing is a pair of hands or, you know, somebody's shoulder or something? <laughs> 
It right. Just There's something work about that way. the eyes, right? There's something about yeah, the eyes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the window to the soul, as they say, mm. whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the the faceless thing. It has its yeah. place, and I and I understand it. Like we watch, we watch plenty of commercials on occasion that don't have people in it, but you know, mm. somehow they're able to connect, yeah. right? They use puppies, yeah, uh, for kittens, <laughs> right? Yeah, Sarah Laughlin in the background. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 interesting. At, at the end of the day, I I like to make sure people leave me knowing. That they're them, and that's what we need. Their stories are unique. Their journey is unique, and yeah. that you have you have countless stories. People are like, I don't have any stories. That's the number one thing I hear is I don't have stories, or I, I can't find any stories, or find the right story. That's what I spend most of my time doing is helping them do that. Yeah, and if people realize as much as some of the people I've worked with learned to realize that you have so many stories so many moments you just kind of forgotten them uh, mm -hmm. or didn't recognize them when they happen that could change the world yeah because if it touches one person then you change the world right one person Ripple at effect. a time i've had people tell me i've never told anybody this story before i've had people wow. tell me they were told by parents and whatnot to never share this story but they decided mm -hmm. to share because parents thought it would like affect whatever would happen to them in their lives and people would judge them. And mm -hmm. actually the story was a powerful story of overcoming. Yeah. And, uh, so we're today right now to everybody watching, we're giving you permission to share your story. That story that's like been inside of you that keeps gnawing at you to share because you know, it has power, but you're worried what other people are going to think. What they're going to think is, wow, I felt that way too. Yeah. And so, so share it, share it. The more, the more we all start sharing our stories, the more we're going to connect with each other. And the more that we connect with each other, the more opportunities to create shared stories together. And the more shared stories we create together as a people, we build bridges. And when bridges are built, yeah. change happens. So there's power in your story. I was just envisioning this bond between people as they share and connect over it. And, you know, it's that bond, like that actual visual bond that builds that bridge. I love that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, think about it. Like, oh, this is my best friend. <laughs> why Why are they your best friend? Mm. <laughs> I have a story. <laughs> the, only, the only way you can answer why they're your best friend is by sh telling experiences or stories that you've had with them that has created the bond that it created. We're wired yeah. for story. We live in story. We think in story. Our relationships yeah. are based on story. Um, so share them. So my next question is very related to this. Um, just kind of what would you recommend to people working on their content strategies um, what are some best practices for creating engaging and relevant content? Is it like it is simply based on story and so that can turn into sales or or what would you? Absolutely. There's there's a way yeah. to put, you know, subtle calls to action inside stories uh, that you're mm -hmm. telling. Not all story. People think stories, they think it's this long narrative. Um, sometimes the story is a piece of the narrative or it's a condensed version of the narrative, right? Right. And there's ways to craft them for different platforms and wherever it is you're going. One of the things that, one of the main things I teach uh, as a story catcher is catch, right? I, I have three right. things, catch the story, craft the story, convert with the story. Those are my three big rocks. When you catch your stories and you do this by writing them down, right? Mm. So I encourage people mm -hmm. to start a story journal. Um, at the end of the day, write down a story, something that happened it can be crazy. Wow. Or it can be insignificant to you perhaps in that moment. Um, but start writing them down. And as you do that, you build this arsenal of stories, right? That's what I call it. The story arsenal. And you take those stories and you figure out what type of 
chemical releases happen when you share that? Will people get mm-hmm. a shot of dopamine, you know, or, or other endorphins, whatever that may be, serotonin, right? And different chemical releases in us put us in different places where we're more likely to do certain things. So right. what does this story make people feel? And then you categorize them also based on the different personas that you have. This story is more likely to resonate with this persona. And it's more likely to resonate with this persona when they're at this place in their buyer's narrative. Mm. I don't call it a journey. I call it a buyer's narrative. Um, I, I What's feel like the difference? Don't... So, you, you know, you've got uh, what awareness, consideration, decision, or your, mm. your big ones. Um, mm. But what happens is we start creating content just specifically, oh, this is my awareness content, oh, making them yeah. aware, making them aware. And, and we don't take into account what made them aware, what, what made them realize they needed to be aware, what's going on in their life prior to that. What was going on in their lives when everything was great and good, yeah. right? And so I teach, take those pieces, and they will fit into the, the story narrative, right? There's an anticipation stage at the beginning where everything's great and hunky-dory, and this is where we meet the hero of the story in their life. And then they have a dream, and they enter this dream stage and they're going after it and they're energized, they're excited, things are going well, the future's bright, and then frustration sets in. <laughs> what causes the frustration? What do they feel like when they're going through this particular mm-hmm. frustration? Mm-hmm. What does it look like? What are the, what's causing all those things? And then they enter this 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 climax stage of the narrative where something presents itself that's going to help them or guide them back to that dream stage so that they can get to the the resolution and the final result. So I think of the buyer's journey as a story rather than just kunk, kunk, kunk. Yeah. Like one step. If I think of it as a story, I can share content that has a narrative vibe, Mm -hmm. has emotional components so that when they read it, they, they say, man, I, I, I know what that's like. I felt that, Mm. right? There's lots of social media scheduling tools. Mm -hmm. And I challenge one of you guys to reach out to me, right? Um, The Mm -hmm. one that can tell the best story is the one people are going to want to work with. And they may not even know why. They'll be like, oh, I love this feature, 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 feature. But it's really everything we do is an emotional thing. I teach people this. This is one of the things. uh, And this make your head think about it however you want. This is one of those woke up in the middle of the night, write it down moments. They're not in your funnel. You're in theirs. Hang on. (laughs) Wow. That is so true. Right? Oh my goodness. There's a big difference between funneling people and trying to force them through this this journey that you want them to take right. and being invited by those same people to go on the journey with them. Yeah. So what kind of content are we creating that resonates with somebody that they don't want to just use your product, but they feel connected to you and they reach out, grab your hand and say, can we do this together and go mm-hmm. through their funnel, their journey? Versus right. the other way, which is us trying to push them through. Force them in. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's, that's a, kind of part of my mindset with content as well. I love this so much. And it, this is so unique from, from anybody else I've interviewed thus far. Because so much of marketing can be technical. But as human beings, like we need this this emotion and this connection. And I love that you're out there guiding people and helping people and just being there for people to, to walk them through this. It's, it's a a wonderful thing. The privilege. Um, Yeah. Isn't it though? Yeah. I I feel the same way. Absolutely. So here's a next question. Maybe this is a little bit more technical, but I'd love your input on what's 
your, this is a big one. <laughs> What's your perspective on the great debate of quality versus quantity when it comes to content? We have social media specialists and, and, you know, experts all over the world saying you should be posting 50 pieces of content a day to get seen and discovered and heard. But I mean, that for the person, the small business owners, the solopreneurs, they're out there burning themselves out and then not knowing where, how to pick up again and, and keep going. So right. what's, I'd love your take on this. My take on that is if you're creating content for content's sake, then you're probably doing it wrong. But if you're creating content for connections sake, then you're probably doing it right. Mm -hmm. How many times a day uh, that means it's going to vary for everyone. The types of content, the formats, video, written blogs, tweets, X's or whatever they're called now. Um, yeah. <laughs> stories, you know, Instagram stories. Um, that all depends on you. And feedback right. you get. So if you're not posting as much, but you're getting more engagement, then don't post as much and focus on the quality of the content. If you're posting all the time and you're getting the engagement you want, then then do it. If it's working, do it. Right. Um, the person I would suggest people talk to is Katie Brinkley. Um, okay. She's, she's a rock star um, at the whole posting. Uh, she's big on posting less. Um, right. So I, uh, that's someone I would suggest to follow. She has some great advice on that. So you know, I love that Katie Brinkley. I've actually never heard of her. So I'll have to oh, go give her a follow as well. Yeah. She's fantastic. Fantastic human being. It's, you know, I know my answers aren't like very direct. This is what you should do. This is what you yeah. should do. <laughs> and that's okay. I love it. But I just, I feel like we get so caught up in the, this is what you should do. This is what you should do. And don't get me wrong. There are technical things there's specifics that that are out there um that have been proven and they work you know and and those are important but sometimes we get caught up in so much stuff mm -hmm. that we're so busy trying to create what we're supposed to instead of creating what we were made to and i, I think that's something we need to maybe look at these have all just been so insightful, so helpful, such just you're leading people in a direction that will be helpful. And, and I'm just so grateful for that, Chad. Why don't you tell people where they can find you on the internet, how they can connect with you? Sure. Uh, if, if you want to, you can reach me at thestorycatcher.com forward slash catch your story. Um, we've got lots of info there and, and, and other things, some new things coming out. Um, we're, we're launching a membership. Uh, that's oh, going to be a, 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 a group coaching type place where people can come in and get help finding their stories, getting feedback on stories they're crafting um, and, and, and all of those things on top of, you know, training and, and coaching for me as well. So uh, information on that can be found there. Otherwise uh, look at my crazy last name. Uh, my wife and I took each other's last names. So there's only two Ia Petersons in the whole world because our kids were already grown when we got married. So if you look up my last name, either she or I will pop up and just click the, <laughs> the follow, friend, add me, message me, whatever. Love to hear from you. Amazing. Thank you so, so much, Chad. This has been such a pleasure. Well, thank you for, for having me. If you're looking for a marketing coach for yourself, please check out the Marketing Mentor six-week group coaching program I have coming up beginning May 1st. There is information in the description down below. If group coaching is not something that is suitable for you, I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching. There's information in the description of this podcast episode. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.